If you watched the last video, you'll know I said I had three sets of gifts. Well, I have just opened up box number two. Hello and welcome back to Bug Realms. On this channel we like to discuss all things creepy crawly. So if that's something that interests you, please consider subscribing to the channel. So, gift number two. Who has arrived and I knew what this was going to be guys this was a gift from Gavin and Stephanie Turner so Gavin contacted me to ask if I would be interested in a sexed pair of praying mantis ghost mantis to be exact as you could have probably told from the title right so they have arrived I have not cut the box open for the camera because that's the same old boring tap you see everywhere so the box is open and inside I received these two tubs so they've actually added their own mesh there's no way these mantis can get out of there and it's actually all right sizes for the mantis to even remain in for now but I think off the camera I will rehouse these guys into something different because I can actually reuse the tubs that they're in for some of my smaller species. So without further ado, let's have a look at these beautiful little guys. We'll take them out, check them over, make sure they're healthy and happy, and then we'll pop them on Camorabi. I don't know how well you can see from there. Here is one of them. Now, let's see if I can determine the sex of this. I would say this was the male. Add a guess. So opening the next box, this one, I would say is the female. Now you're probably thinking why have you got both mantis on your hand? Well I'm keeping an eye on them to stop any cannibalism guys and ghost mantis, the P. paradoxa, are a fairly communal mantis species so they can be housed together providing there is enough food present. And as you can see, these guys right now have got no interest in cannibalizing each other. So, I will be housing these two separately. Um, and we will try for a breeding project in the future. Oh. Oh. Oh, their antennas flick like this. Really, really quick. That is adorable. So, I'm going to set these guys up on Kimura B so we can have a bit of a better look. Okay, so first things first, I've forgotten which one this one was, I might have swapped boxes, are you the female? So, just so you guys can see how I set up for Kamorabi, I now have a ring light at the top and I have an additional light at the bottom. So I'm just going to be placing her, if she'll obey, oh baby mantis, just like so, and then I bring the camera closer. And that's how I get my Kimura B shots. So, it's just doing a booty dance at the moment, facing the complete opposite way for a good shot on Kimura B. We have our female P. Paradoxa, the Ghost Mantis. Having a wiggle, having a booty wiggle. Bom, 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 bom. I need some cool music to go with this, but you know what? I can't be bothered. Uh, <laughs> that's the truth of it. I know I'm liking the editing process and the music part drives me mad because I struggle with my particular editor when it comes to audio adjustments. But come on, let's turn you around so people can see. There you are. So what I absolutely love about these is purely shape. So they tend to stick to the brown colorations, but you can get them in almost blacks and greens too. This is so cute. Now let me try and pop this one somewhere where we can have a look at the head so I can tell you where I sex this mantis. Now normally you can go by segments on the abdomen. However, ghosts, as far as I'm aware, and somebody correct me if I'm wrong in the comments below, can be done through the head alone. So there we have the best shot I can get. And as you can see, the little antenna wiggling away like I was explaining earlier. And you see the protrusion from the head there coming backwards is almost a straight line and fairly thick, like just a bit smaller than the size of the head. Do you see what I mean? The long part coming back from behind the eyes there. So 
when they tend to be sort of straight like that and a bit thicker, that's normally the sign of a female. So this is how I sex this one, just with the naked eye. Now, normally, as I said, you do count segments. But I just want to see if I was correct. So any Mantis lovers out there, I know I've got a few people with more experience with Mantis than me. Let me know if I'm correct on sexing this one as female. If I'm not, I'll happily admit I was wrong. So let's have a look at the male now and see if we can see the difference in what I'm talking about. They should technically have a slender, more crooked part to the head. Let me just get him on Kamorabi. So I have actually left him on his lid because all of this background coloration was making it hard to focus on the mantis. Now I know he's facing sideways, but you can see a difference already, right? Now if I try and spin him, without him freaking out and disappearing. You see atop the head there, that slender, more jagged appearance compared to the thickness of the females. That, whoa, sorry dude. That is how I determined the sex. Now these guys are such interesting looking little predators, aren't they? And I do believe they are from Africa. So they're quite a beginner species, they do fairly well in a reasonably dry environment. As long as they have their access to food and water, they should thrive okay. Now this one is actually looking around at some tiny little flies that are buzzing around the area. So when I change my stick insects, I often leave the old bits of bramble on the side for a moment just to make sure there aren't any escapees. And the occasional few little flies buzz around there. And now he's looking right at us. Oh, I'm happy with these shots. Oh, just got it blurred. That's a shame. So there he is again on our trunk on Kamorabi. For anyone that's new, I will keep saying this because I get new subscribers all the time. Kamorabi is the name of our filming area here. Oh, look at him. I do find with this filming area it's quite hard to film small animals so I might need to make a mini Kamorabi one day just because like here you can see it's defocused and it's focusing on the straight background now I'm not really that camera savvy to do manual focusing so I kind of got to rely look at that look look at the blur and see how difficult it actually is I've left these blurs in just to explain it to you guys but it's actually quite difficult I can spend over an hour just filming an animal on here for 10 seconds of footage sometimes. Oh, but look at him. Bless him. Ah, oh, now that is a beautiful shot. But you can see how well he can camouflage, right? He's sat on top of green moss, but just because of a few dead leaves in the background and branches, actually camouflaged really, really well. And they tend to stick to these colors actually for camouflage. There are a lot of birds over there, and thousands upon thousands of different animals that will eat insects, including the praying mantis. So as savage as they are, they're not actually that high on the food chain. So these guys do need to rely on their appearance to stay hidden. It also aids them in catching prey, because a lot of mantis actually are sit and wait predators. They'll wait for something to get close before they strike. Now, although all mantis prefer flying prey, some do take to various grubs, roaches, and other things. So I'm gonna see if I can entice this one. Oops. With a rather large... No, dude, dude. Don't run. Ah, I'm stuck, I'm stuck. I'm gonna have to cut the camera. Yes, he certainly doesn't want the grub today. What I'll be doing is I'll pop in some small fruit flies for him, perhaps some bean weevils, and see if he's hungry that way. So I've just opened the container for the female, put the same grub on. Again, it's probably a little bit large, but mantis have taken prey on this size comparison before in my collection. And I don't think we're going to have an interest here today. These are massive waxworms. Last time I bought waxworms, they were like half that size. Nah. Oh well, these guys have spent time in the post and they were probably well fed before they came to me. So, back to flying prey for these ghosts. Now, I actually bought these waxworms because 
in time they will turn to wax moths and mantis do enjoy moths and as my mantis collection grows I would like to be able to feed them a staple diet of various different prey. I popped one last try of a much smaller mealworm just on that off chance. Can't really use flying prey in Camorabi. He'll just run. Ah, look at that look. It's just rubbing against his leg. Or her leg, sorry. Not a care in the world. Okay, well, I guess we better put these mantis back then. I'll sort out a home for them off camera. And, uh, yeah. Massive thanks to you, Gavin, for sending me these beauties. I'll try and keep you updated as much as I can on them. So good to have these guys back. So for those of you that didn't know, a while ago I had uh, a pair of ghosts. The male died in his sub-adult molt, so his molt to adulthood, which was gutting, and the female has lived with me for quite some time, and she recently passed. In fact, she passed not long before Gavin has offered me these beauties. So that's worked out at perfect, perfect timing. So yeah, if you guys want to see what else dwells within the realm, make sure to pop back weekly for multiple videos. That's going to be it from me. And we say goodbye to our beautiful ghost mantis. Take care, everyone. See you in the next episode. Bye.